Uh, I am Sovik. I don't need to go through my introduction. Uh, I run a tiny design studio out of Delhi. Uh, we are a two-seater uh, studio. Uh, we are happy to become an auto rickshaw if anyone uh, is interested. So uh, just come and talk to me uh, after the talk. Uh, and uh, before I start, I just want to show you my T-shirt. Uh, my T-shirt says Data Goddess. So if you believe in data, or if you believe in God, you should believe in whatever I say. Right? All right. OK, so I love traveling a lot. And uh, last year, I was fortunate enough to travel uh, some parts uh, of India. Uh, and I was traveling on a train uh, back from uh, Calcutta to Delhi. And this is, this is a scene from uh, West Bengal. Uh, there was a town where I got 3G signal. I managed to download my tweets. I was going through the tweets, and the train was going away from that town. I switched over to an edge network. I clicked on a link that I really wanted to read. It started loading the website, right? Uh, and the signal strength was reducing. After a while, I got something like this. And it just stuck there. Uh, because by this time, I, uh, there was no more data that is coming to my phone. Uh, this is a state where the entire website is loaded on my phone. The page is there on my phone, but the fonts haven't managed to load. And I just can't read it anymore, because now I don't have data, in spite of the fact that I have the entire web page on my phone. Has anyone experienced this before? Few people have, right? Uh, and this is not great. And, uh, and I have experienced lots of things like browser crashes. I, I've, seen, I've gone to an event where the website has so much jazzy JavaScript animation that will crash on my phone. It will just not let me view a conference website. Uh, position fixed is another problem. We have sticky navigation, and the moment I try to zoom in on my phone, it will just fill up the entire screen. I'm not able to read the content inside this. And, and I've come to believe that uh, most, uh, I mean, uh, how many of you enjoy the web browsing experience on your phones? OK, how many of you don't enjoy it, really? OK, good, you're the right audience. Uh, and you know the problem is really there when, when you have cartoons being made on this. Has anyone seen Comet Strip? I mean, if you haven't, just go and check them out, because it's a, it's a series of cartoons relating to the daily life of web agencies and developers. Okay? So they made one on uh, mobile browsing in 2015. So here's how it goes. The first, you, you open a website, it says 10 islands ruled by cats. You click on that, there's a long waiting time and a blank screen that you're staring at. And after a while, there's an ad that comes up that says, buy a car with your phone. And you wait for five seconds until a cross appears, right, to close this, this layer on top. And once, and, and it's such a tiny cross that you didn't, when you try to tap it, you manage to tap the ad instead of the cross. So you landed them on that website, which says, OK, now you can install a mobile car shop, which you didn't want. You go back, and you, you again have that same problem. The same dialogue opens up again, and they have not stored this in, the, in a cookie or something. And this time, you manage to press the cross, and it says, do you want to download our app and read this article? Right? And you say, no. It will go ahead and say, do you authorize this website to check your location? And if you and these days, this also comes up. Do you want a notification from us? Before you can even go ahead and read what you, what's there. And by that time, you have lost interest. And this is something that typically keeps happening. Uh, this is a, a cartoon, I think, is a great indicator of uh, how, uh, of the fact that this, an experience this, like this is widely uh, experienced by plenty of people. And uh, I want to recap a little bit of last year, because last year was a really a landmark year. Uh, here are two quick facts. Huh? Uh, the page views on desktops and laptops have gone down by 13% globally. Okay? Fewer people or fewer web pages are now being accessed through desktop and laptop. And as for mobiles, it's gone up by 39% uh, just over the last year. Uh, now, 
this, this is a small tweet by Nikhil uh, three years back, and he's, he says that when conferences go beyond pictures stating the obvious, like mobile browsing is increasing, it's not insightful at all. Even if you have data, it's not insightful. So the fact that you have these two metrics that say that mo mobile usage is increasing, and desktop usage on the web is decreasing, it's not very insightful. Everyone knows about it. Uh, this is a known fact that the mobile web usage is on the rise. And uh, what I also find from uh, people around me, uh, plenty of people around me, even product companies, they just keep complaining about this, that mobile is a hard problem. Anyone over here believes it, that mobile is very difficult to design for? Few people. Thankfully, most of you don't believe it. Uh, but, well, uh, I think it is a problem. I, I don't like to call it a hard, hard problem. I rephrase this as mobile is an odd problem. It's, not, it's unlike many other problems, because what has happened is we are used to laptops and desktop for all this while, and then suddenly a new thing gets invent invented that's less featured, less powerful, doesn't work as well as the laptops and desktops. It's almost like just imagine yourself if, if, set, if there was no, if you were using TV all the time and suddenly today a radio gets invented and then you have to design programs for radio where, and, and you, you think visually you know how to give an art direction or visual direction, but, but you can't design for radio because the constraints are there, there's no screen. You can't design a visual experience. It might be portable, there might be, uh, uh, it's also running on battery probably. So you feel chained, right? You feel haunted by these limitations. And uh, it's strangely like, I, I really like this expression, it's exactly like back to the future thing because the invention of mobile is like going back in computing in some way, less power devices now, we, we have, uh, less capable devices, but you also know it's the future. It's, it's sort of that situation. And, and why, why, why is it even important to take up this challenge? to design well for on a mobile screen, why is it important? Why can you not slack or compromise on this? Uh, and uh, for this, uh, I'm, I'm just going back, taking a step back and trying to answer this question for myself. Probably you'll relate to it, that why in the first place do I even work on, on the web? I could have picked any platform, be it iOS, be it Android, be it not even these platforms, maybe making some software on your car deck, right? Those platforms as well. Uh, why, why the web at all in the first place? And for me, the answer is, uh, if I have to answer it in one word, there might be plenty of reasons, but if I have to pick one, it will be this. The fact that I, it can reach so many people. And I, I, I think the only communications only the, the only way of communication that, is, uh, that reaches more number of people than the web is probably the mobile network. So if I was today copywriting SMSs, probably I'd be able to reach more number of people. But the next best thing is probably the web today. Uh, if I'm designing a web page, it can reach many more people. Uh, and uh, no single proprietary platform can possibly achieve the reach that the web has achieved today. And that is partly because the way, the way uh, W3C, the mission and the vision works. Huh? This, they say we want to give web to all, we want to make it open for everything on every platform. We want to build trust. And if you just, it's a, it, there are these loaded words, but for me, it, they want to give it to everyone as possible. And that's why they have made the technology such that it can be embedded on almost any new device that might come in the future. You can connect it to the web. And, uh, if we look into how successful has web been in reaching out to people, so I just pulled in some data, right? So if we look at internet penetration today, 87% uh, of people in the US have access to the internet, all right? If you look at the global average, it's less than half, 42% people have it, okay? So much people still in the dark. This is the only this much set is other set of people who have access to the internet in the world. Anyone knows what is the internet penetration in India? Any idea, anyone? Wild guess? Okay, so th these are figures from uh, January. I don't think it could have gone up to 27%, it's just 19. It's less than half of global average. So just imagine 81% of India doesn't even have the internet access right now. Uh, 
if i also further try to look at what is the number of web pages that are loaded on mobile all right that are served to mobile mobile devices uh in the us that's 25% okay this is last all of last year uh this is the report that has come out in 2015 january 25% of the web pages were served on mobiles the global average is more 33% uh any any guesses about india now Seventy-two percent. We are more than double of global average in terms of web pages being served to mobiles. And what could be the possible factor for this? We don't have internet penetration, but so many people are, so many web pages are being accessed on the mobile. Uh, uh, let's let's take a look at some other factor over here. I want to divert away from tech and web over here and look at let's look at the wealth distribution in India, right? How many people have how much money? and uh, this is from a report in uh, uh december last year that has come in the hindu the poorest 10% have about 0.2% of india's wealth the top 10% of india's population have 74% of india's wealth right and uh, if you if you take a look at this, something like this you can almost say okay 19% people have internet penetration uh most likely we are keeping this side covered so it's almost saying that the left has been left out right almost fair to say that this part has been left out and and we also know probably that the phones that we carry in our pockets i am carrying an iphone right uh would possibly be outside the reach of all these people uh your top android phones will also be so someone has to think like okay if i have to bring everyone to the web because Uh, uh because we want maximum number of people connected to the web what can we do about it let's let's try to build phones which are less expensive inexpensive low margin but we have 80% of india's population to cater to right i can sell a lot more in number and that's what some of the uh manufacturers are doing already uh most of them come from china right and uh smartphones are getting uh affordable and they are being purchased in plenty and bringing first time users onto the web so we are still adding new people onto the web through inexpensive smartphones today and if you are uh if you like facts so here's what happened in 2013 the global smartphone sales crossed the feature phone sales and asia pacific uh grew the highest at 74.1% india is a part of asia pacific and uh, latin america is the second largest growth of smartphone uh, sales uh and uh, if you walk out if you like me and you like walking the streets if you're around if you take the bus if you take the public transport you you would have suddenly noticed over last one and a half years or one year that so many people are carrying smartphones and people you never expected to have phones in the first place maybe feature phones and there are people like this right now uh cab drivers auto drivers people on the buses delivery boys street vendors farmers are using smartphones now they are connected to the web uh some some part of this is pushed through businesses i mean so many cab companies have come in and handed over a smartphone to the cab driver and say go we want you to uh, to make money for our company right and while while they have given the smartphones i've i've talked to lots of uh, cab drivers and they have given the smartphone to their kids who are in the 10th standard who has taken the smartphone it's connected to the 3g they have installed the youtube app and they are watching a movie every single night on that smartphone that they got right so that's how that's how smartphone is reaching uh, becoming popular to uh, people who are not at the top of the socio economic pyramid right now this is really this is this has been a promise in the delhi elections in december <laughs> you know that this has become popular everyone wants wifi now yeah everyone wants wifi last year uh, and if something goes out as a promise in the election uh, manifestos you know it's a populist demand right i mean it's almost like this is something i had shown last year you remember uh, at the bottom of the moslow's hierarchy of needs we have wifi we can live without food water and shelter but we cannot live without wifi this is something i had shown last year it's almost turning true just that by the end of 2014 probably someone did an update to this they added this 
they say, okay, I need battery more than Wi-Fi because my batteries are draining out. Uh, and and if uh, if I if I have to see how how well the internet connections work in India, uh, or or in the, in the world, let's let's look at the average internet connection speeds in the world today. Uh, all right, USA has an average of 11.5 Mbps. The global average is less than half at 4.5. India is less than half of the global average, average 2 Mbps. And if you're talking about mobiles, it's even less than that. 1.7 Mbps is the average internet connection. But you know the reality, huh? I've been in Bangalore and I've been cribbing about the 3G speeds here. It, does, it just doesn't work. I, I can't believe it is even one point, it has to be one fifth the average probably, that the actual speeds that I'm getting over here. And, and how, how, are, how is the community uh, changing its web design uh, over the years? Uh, how are our page weights changing? That means how big are our each web page? Uh, over the uh, last uh, two years, between January 2013 and January 2015, our, an average web page weight has increased by 50%. That means we are making heavier web pages. Our internet speeds are so low. Uh, between just between January and 2015 uh, April, there has been a further 17 KB increase, and each KB counts, huh? And uh, and and what? And does anyone know which is the most popular web browser in India? Yeah, someone screamed out the answer, right? I wonder how many people actually, even uh, people like us, how many of us use it or even develop on this browser? Uh, in 2013, this became the most popular browser. Combine any Chrome desktop browser, mobile browsers combined, and today its, it's market share is about 32%, built by a Chinese company. It, it does some amount of cloud acceleration and data compression, and therefore the pages load faster. And this is screamed ahead of all other competitors today in India. Uh, okay, that, that's... That's probably not true. Okay, this uh, I've marked the sources everywhere, and I hope I have enough money for my defense lawyers. <laughs> All right, so there might be different sides, but no doubt that this web, web browser is getting popular, right? Uh, there is also one more thing that is changing because our web web uh, web, uh, web page weights are changing. It's getting heavier and. The consequence is not just performance and speed. Does, and can anyone think of what is the other consequence of our pages being heavier? Anyone can, wants to take a guess at that? Sorry? What is the consequence of web pages being heavier? Uh, other than the speeds being low and therefore it's, it's loading slow. Irritation is an, it's because the speed is low. Eating users' data, something somewhat related. Okay, how, how about how much does it cost your users to actually access your website? Has anyone figured that? We are talking about, uh, at least I am talking about the 80%, right? I think this is important. There's a site called uh, whatdoesmysitecost.com. If, if you haven't accessed it, uh, put in your URL over there. These guys will do the math. They'll work out the best case scenario. Huh? They have the data for uh, the different mobile networks around the world. They allow you to see how much it would cost in US dollars, uh, US dollar based on uh, purchasing power parity and as a percentage of uh, gross national income per capita, and so on and so forth. I put the Meta Refresh website, this year's conference website on this. This claims about 8.35 MB was downloaded when they tried to access the Meta Refresh website. And how much does it cost to the different countries here? There's a country called uh, Vanuatu, uh, in the Pacific, if they access the Meta Refresh website once, about 34% of their day's income is gone. Can you, can you believe it? And we are a little lucky, huh? India is not even in this page. If you go a little further down, uh, this is where India is, if you can see, this is where India is. But we are still way behind China, which is right at the bottom, right? But it costs money uh, to access web pages. I wonder if you ever 
think on these scenarios. And this is the best case scenario, as I just told. There's one more trend that, that I, that's really disturbing uh, to me. Uh, it's called the view desktop version trend. Uh, it just doesn't want to go away. And uh, about last year, I was, uh, I, 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 I was a part of a project in which I was doing a bit of a user research uh, on, on the domain of banking. And I think banking is a very basic requirement for people. Uh, and if you go through the mobile banking experiences, and if you see their mobile websites, uh, they don't even allow you to do essential tasks through the mobiles. For example, most banks that I researched last year uh, would not even allow you to add a beneficiary to make a fund transfer through the mobile. They'll say, go to the desktop, add a beneficiary, then you can come back to the mobile and do a transfer. Right? And this, this is the reality for, for uh, banking, which I believe is extremely essential. And proudly, uh, a bank states that on their mobile website. We have ensured that key services are available to you on the mobile website. For other services, please continue to the desktop login. What they have effectively done is, with this, something like this, is that fundamentally they have disregarded a class of users who only have an access to the web through mobiles. Right? And uh, if, if you want to see some facts here on do really, are there people around who really see websites only through mobile and don't have an access to desktop? Uh, this was mid last year. Many developing nations, the majority of mobile web users are mobile only. The highest include Egypt at 70% and India at 59%. We are the second highest in that. People who have access to the internet only via mobile. Uh, Further, it uh, goes on to say that many mobile-only web users do not have a bank account in India. This is 57% of the mobile-only. A chicken and egg problem, I guess. Banks see, oh, I don't have customers on the mobile. Users will see, oh, I don't have banks on the mobile. Uh, and and we, are, we, are, we are in sort of a mess, and we shouldn't be in, in a situation like this. And I think view desktop site is a way of a door slap. Even if, while we are talking about the other forms of door that is happening, saying that go to the desktop website is, in my opinion, a way to shut out users uh, who are trying to access uh, through mobiles. And uh, the, the W3C has, uh, uh, has actually put out, uh, uh, has tried to emphasize on this point that's called one web. Uh, I don't know if you have actually gone and read through this ever. Uh, if you have, that's great. I hope you even uh, believe in that. But what they say is, uh, the one web means that making as far as is reasonable, the same information and services available to users, irrespective of the device they use using. That's how they're defining uh, one web. But they, they do recognize that there's a difference between desktop and, uh, and mobiles. And they further go on to say at, uh, a little later that, uh, that while services may be most appropriately experienced in one context or another, it is considered best practice to provide as reasonable experience as is possible given device limitations and not to exclude access from any particular class of device, uh, except where this is necessary because of a device limitation. And I refuse to believe that uh, uh, I cannot add a beneficiary through a mobile phone. If, I, if I'm accessing the, uh, the, a bank through a mobile phone. And this is where they, we are flouting something that makes the basis of web. Uh, because uh, what do mobile users want to do? Uh, and this is a, this is, there's a website called what do mobile users want to do.com. The answer is coming straight from God. God requires just one word to answer this, and it's everything. Right? Mobile users want to do everything. It's just we who exclude them from doing things by making wrong design choices uh, while we are making our products. So let me just sum, up, sum this up a little bit. Uh, I'm saying that mobiles have uh, made it economically feasible for a large section of India to access the web. And further, that an even larger population from the weaker socioeconomic sections are waiting to get on board. Uh, 
and that is the reality that we are in right now. And if we take a step further back from this, right? We are talking about India. India is just one of the 117 developing nations, and India is classified as one of the 10 newly industrialized countries, which basically means that in many ways India is better off than about 100 other developing nations. So the state that you see right now possibly is a better situation than about 100 other countries that are lagging behind us. Uh, so you can probably do the math and see how many people are we affecting by taking bad design choices, by making bad design uh, decisions. There's a talk by Ethan Marcotte. Uh, he gave this in 2013. It's called The Map is Not the Territory. Uh, I, I, I would like you to go and watch that. But essence of that talk is right in the title itself. It basically means what we believe the map of the internet is, is not the actual territory of the internet. It will extend far beyond that. And our idea of the internet, or our idea of web, is extremely limited. Uh, and we are just looking through the map that we know of uh, as such. Uh, the title, of course, has been borrow borrowed uh, from uh, Alfred uh, Korzbiski. He's a Polish names are hard to pronounce. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, and uh, what I'm soon, very soon, if, and if it hasn't already happened, people using the web will be very different from us. What we imagine a person using a web, uh, using the web, will not hold true much longer because our idea of our peers, people around us probably is at the extreme right of the chart, what we, I pointed out. Uh, there'll be new geographies, new languages, new cultures that will get exposed to the web. Uh, the place where I got this t-shirt about a week back, less than a week back, uh, I learned that uh, in, in the state of, just in the state of Assam, uh, question papers, that school question papers are printed in 57 different languages. Just in the state of Assam. And, uh, uh, the, so I, and I suppose many of these people are going to get on the web sooner or later, within the few years. I hope they do very fast, uh, because I want the web to be as, uh, as impactful as possible. So a compromised web uh, mobile browsing experience uh, will affect far more number of people than a compromised laptop and desktop uh, experience going ahead. And it would go against the vision, the mission, the values, and the guiding principles that make the web. Uh, which is, that's something that makes, uh, what makes web so reachable, so uh, open and interoperable, and, and the things that make it uh, reach out to thousands and, not really thousands, actually millions and billions of people, uh, is the fact that uh, uh, the principles that um, uh, make, make, uh, make the web. And the web essentially is an agreement. It's an agreement between uh, the browsers have agreed to actually follow a standard specification. Uh, the device manufacturers have, have a promise to keep. Uh, the, the, the people who are uh, building and developing the web, they have a promise to keep. The mobile operators, the networks, they have a promise to keep. And the community who builds websites also have a promise to keep, uh, which is what would actually make it as reachable as possible. Uh, going ahead. Uh, so key, key things, I think accessibility is the base ta takeaway, uh, is the base experience for people. If you, if you slam people out or if you, if you provide experiences uh, that uh, will not let people actually go ahead and access the, web, uh, the website itself, uh, that's basically missing the point. The base experience is lost. Uh, the other is performance is an uncompromisable feature today. Uh, it's uncompromisable because not only it affects experience, there is an imp economic impact to that as well, uh, which I just pointed out. And uh, uh, there is this excellent line on an article called The Promise of the Web, which was written a few days back by Daniel uh, uh, on the Medium. And it has this line that says, if the web didn't exist, it would be necessary to invent it today. Uh, you can go ahead and read it, and you can even think about this that in case we didn't have the web and we only had the app world, it would be extremely crucial for us to go ahead and create the web today. Uh, go ahead and read this and read the argument. I really love this. Uh, so small appeal. Uh, I think technology, uh, people who are working in the technology, 
uh, are, are the people who uh, can best understand the problem, they can best understand the technology, they can best understand the promise that web has, and they are the ones who have to defend it in a certain way if they are asked to break away out of it. Uh, so, so things like uh, uh, educating uh, our clients, uh, um, uh, people who are taking managerial decisions, who are business heads, it's, I think that people who are working with technology, they are the ones who have to go ahead and explain it, explain the thing and keep the stand. Uh, I, I, most of my clients, when I'm working uh, in my design studio, uh, the websites that we make, they evaluate the website on a 27-inch iMac. And it's so hard, but I have to try as much as possible. Please don't use that screen to evaluate the design. Please don't use that screen to push your design feedback. Just a few days back, I was with a client who was pushing, oh, can you just put it beside this, make this a two-column thing on the, again on their laptop? I think the most of the world will not access it in a two-column way. Most of the web world will access it in a single column. So you have to prioritize these two things. Uh, all right, so uh, one last point is spare a thought about people you might be excluding. Uh, and do ask this question uh, as what's, what's our web going to be going ahead? Uh, that's the end of my talk, but before I end it, this is something uh, that, that's happening right now in India. Uh, this is also something people who, have worked, who are working on the technology have to stand up and uh, take a stance on. The TRI has asked us to uh, reply. They have op opened public consultation on, on how neutral should the web be, should the internet be, or rather. Uh, and uh, please go and answer if you don't know how to answer these questions, go ahead and read on uh, savetheinternet.in. There are answers available. And do customize the answer because you might not believe exactly what's written there. Change the answer and just push in your uh, recommendations to try. Uh, because again, as the things I pointed out, uh, I think the issue of a neutral internet is as much essential for the larger audience that is yet to see the web. Right? Thanks a lot. We have a few minutes for questions. And uh, um, one thing I want to say before this closes. How many of you have already done this? For the rest of you, what are you waiting for? It works on your phone. Open your phone, do it right now. Okay? Now, um, the other thing I want to ask is, how many of you know who built this website? Uh, I, think, I think people no. should come up here. People who build the website Good. should come up here. Go. The two people who built this website are right here in this room. One is here, and the other guy is here. Yeah. The third person is in Calcutta, but he was here at the last edition of Metairi Fish. So yeah, these are the people to thank, because as of today, we effectively have brought down Facebook. Yeah. It's back to Q&A. <laughs> Banking websites or apps uh, should focus on, you know, more features and stuff like that. But most of the banking apps do not build apps themselves. You know, uh, they are being outsourced and uh, as far as I know, I mean, few of the apps, uh, when you try to log in, they go to a third party software and then, you know, go to the banking website. So almost all of your passwords and stuff like that is like insecure. And so I'm thankful that they don't giving these features like, you know, out there right now. But the way they do things should change, not the, you know, what they are presenting right now. So the methodologically or, you know, the, the way they've been building stuff should change, you know, in any of the companies. That's what I believe. So uh, my point, uh, I think uh, uh, what I want to s wanted to say out of that point wasn't exactly translated there. I don't want them to build more features. Uh, they are providing a set of features today that is accessible on a desktop web on a browser that is running on the laptop, the same set of features are not available on the browser that's running on the phone. That is 
not a great decision. Yeah, get that. 